sing it with your confidence that the Lord loves you, that He'll never leave nor forsake you. In spite of all you've done, in spite of the things that come through your mind, God never changes. His love is unfailing. His love will never leave you. He knows you, and He will never leave you. If you're thinking about maybe something you thought about or something you did and you think God doesn't love you, that's a lie from the enemy. His love draws you back to Him. His love is calling on you. His love is calling on you. Can run to you. You see the depth of my heart, and you love me. You love me in spite of my flaws, in spite of my faults, in spite of my flaws. You make provision. You make provision. You make provision. You make provision. You see the depth of my heart, and you love me the same. and put your hands on your chest where your heart is and tell me if you can feel your heart beat. If you can feel your heart beat, if you don't believe God loves you, that's a sign that God loves you this morning. He loves you more than you can ever believe. He sent his only son to die for us. He sent his only son to carry the cross for us, to die for us. On the cross of Calvary, he came to this world so we might have life. The beat you can feel on your heart, on your chest, that's a sign of God's love for you this morning. That's a sign of God's presence in your life. That's a sign of God's hand on you. This morning, I just want to tell you, God has not left you. God hasn't forsaken you. He's got your back. Because he's the omnipotent God. He's the omnipresent God. He's the all-sufficient God. The whole world belongs to him. And this morning, we just want to appreciate him. Father, this morning, we thank you and we appreciate you for your love. Thank you for sending your son to die for us on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for giving us life. We cannot thank you enough for God. We cannot thank you enough for God. We just build you a tower of praise this morning, oh God. We build you a tower of praise. 
we lift your name on high because you are God. You alone are God over our lives, oh God. And we bless and we adore you, oh God. We bless and we adore you. We lift your name on high. We give you praises, oh God. We give you praises because there is none like you. None can be compared unto you, oh God. In the heavens and the earth, there is none that can be compared unto you. And even as we sing your praises, oh God, as we sing your praises, as we build you a tower of praise, oh God, we know you're fighting behind the scenes for us. You're taking care of all of our issues. You're taking away all of our burdens. You're taking away all of our sorrows in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because you are God over our lives. Thank you because you are God over our situations, oh God. And Father, this morning we just, we rest. We take counsel. We rest in your peace. Your peace that passes all understanding. Let that be our portion this morning in the name of Jesus. We bless you and we lift you up, oh God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. If you are alive this morning, if you are alive and you know that you are alive, if you can feel your breath, I want you to shout hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. The dead cannot praise the Lord. The dead cannot praise the Lord. So if you are alive and you know that you are alive, shout hallelujah. The name, praise the name of the Lord. Father, we just thank you and we lift your name on high. Welcome to New Covenant House. We're going to take our declaration right now. And these are powerful words, right? As you speak this word, you're declaring and you're prophesying to your life. I'm sure we all have testimonies about these declarations. I have testimonies. So let's continue and speak and prophesy into our lives this morning in the same fashion. Amen. At the count of three. One, two, three. I am the seed of Abraham and all the promises of Abraham are mine. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I will receive all the blessings promised to the righteous. I am blessed as I go in and blessed as I go out. My children are blessed. My house is blessed. I am blessed at work. I am blessed at home. In my relationship, I am blessed in my business. I am blessed in my career. The works of my hands are blessed. I will learn to nation and borrow from no one. I am blessed with good health and sad mind. Because the blood of Jesus avails for me. No evil shall befall me. No plague shall come near my dwelling. No arm shall befall me. The God of all grace has himself restored, confirmed, strengthened, and established me. Instead of shame, I receive a double portion. Instead of dishonor, I shall rejoice. This year it shall be unto me only according to his word. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Welcome to New Covenant House. My name is um, Pastor Tolu. Amen. Good morning, New Covenant House. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sunday. My name is Toya and I'll be bringing the announcement this beautiful Sunday. First up, we're going to acknowledge our first time guests in the house. So if you're worshiping with us for the first time, please can you wave your hands. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome. And if you're also worshiping with us online, please can you leave the raise hand emoji in the comment section. <laughs> and please, NCH family, welcome them to church. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoy the service. If you're also new at church, please can you go ahead and scan the QR code behind me and so you can stay connected with us. If you're unable to scan the QR code, please visit our website, newchdallas.com, and click on the connect icon to find out more about us and stay updated. On your way out, you can stop by the welcome desk. We have a beautiful and special package for you. Thank you. We have a new baby in the house. Woohoo! Iyanu. 
Olufunwa was born to Sheo and CG on the 30th of November, 2021, weighing seven pounds and four ounces. Please reach out to the family to congratulate them if you have the information. To find out more about our various live group meetings and other events happening this week, please scan the QR code on the screen for dates and time, or visit our app or website to find out more about our events. The children have their lock in this Friday at church. So there'll be gingerbread houses, Nerf guns, pizza, dance party, and sleep. So if you have all your kids, please bring them to church this Friday to enjoy this amazing event. Please check the NCH app for a link to these events to register. At this time, if there are any youths in the house, please you can go ahead and um, go to the youth lounge. There's a Christmas party going on right now. I don't think you wanna miss that. Happy holidays, guys! Woo! I'm excited. Christmas is my favorite time of the year. With Christmas right around the corner, new CH, new Covenant House has various events and activities planned out for us. Next Sunday, we have a Christmas sweater Sunday. So please wear your favorite and ugliest sweaters to church. I would like to see all these wonderful colors. <laughs> we also have Carols and Coco. This will be held on the church premises on Christmas Eve. December 24th at 7 p.m. Doors open at 6.30. Please bring your lawn chairs and blanket. We already have chocolate and cocoa, so we just need the lawn chairs and blanket. December 26th is our Q&A Sunday, which is the last Sunday of the year. Please go ahead and scan the QR code behind me to send in your questions. I'm just gonna give you guys a moment. So please bring out your phones. I'm not seeing any phones. <laughs> and scan the... Thank you, thank you so much. Please don't forget, if you have any questions, any questions at all, just leave it in the comments, in the link. Our Spaces, which is also our young adult ministry here at New Covenant House, is hosting a holiday canned food drive. And we'll be collecting all items until next week, Sunday the 19th. There's a gray box in the lobby, it has a label on it where you can drop your items. A few of the things we need are canned fruit, peanut butter, canned chicken, and canned vegetables. All of these items will be going to the North Texas Food Bank. God bless you as you give generously this all the day. If you'd like to stay connected with us, for everyone joining us online, if you haven't here, please go ahead and click the like button. And if you're on YouTube, make sure to share and subscribe to our channel. We're also on social media, so you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, our handle is at New Covenant House. And if you don't already have it, you can go ahead and download our app. It's NCH Dallas. It's available on Google Play and the Apple Store. If you already have the app, please be sure to update your contact information so you don't miss out on any notifications. God bless you as you enjoy the rest of the service. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap offering. Give him a praise offering. It's not for me. It's not for me. It's for Jesus. So let's celebrate the King of Kings this morning. Let us praise his holy name. Let us exalt his holy name. See, God has kept you for 30 million 240 seconds this year. That is enough to praise the name of the Lord. God has kept you for 540,000 minutes this year. That is enough to praise the name of the Lord. For God has kept you for 8,400 hours this year. That is enough to praise the name of the Lord. For God has kept your heart beating for 350 days this year. That is enough to praise the name of the Lord. For God has kept you for 50 weeks this year. That is enough to praise the name of the Lord. You survived a pandemic. That is enough to praise the name of the Lord. You are here and you are alive. That is enough to praise the name of the Lord. You're not where you want to be, but he's taking you there. Somebody celebrate the name of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Man, I feel like we're, we're, we're having kids announced every week. Man, you all have been busy. Married folks have been busy. God is good. 
Let's say a quick word of prayer before we uh, jump right in. Heavenly Father, Lord, there's a song that has been playing in my head for like two weeks. And um, I think we should sing it a cappella style, right? Old school style. Let us just rise and just sing to the Lord this morning in your own voice. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Yes, yes, Lord. Be glorified. Yes, Lord. Be glorified. Just, just continue in that same sentence. Let's glorify him. Let's glorify him in our homes, in our lives, in our jobs, in our lifestyle, in everything we do. Let us just glorify him this morning. One more time, one more time, one more time. Be glorified. Yes, Lord. Be glorified. Be Heavenly Father, Lord, we bless you this morning. We pray, Father, Lord, that this morning you steady our hearts, O oh Lord, that you focus our minds, O oh Lord, that you rest our spirits, O oh Lord, and you nourish our souls, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, O oh Lord, for the Holy Spirit to move freely this morning, freedom to heal, freedom to teach, freedom to nourish, freedom to comfort, freedom to strengthen, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Your word says <laughs> that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run to him and are safe. We pray that this morning you provide us with sanctuary, O oh Lord. We provide, pray, O oh Lord, that this morning you heal our hearts, O oh Lord. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. amen. You may all be seated. Hallelujah. Compliments of the season to you guys. You guys all look fantastic. You guys look great. It's, uh, it's the holidays. I don't know about you guys, but I've been looking forward to it. It's, uh, we've been going, going crazy for the past year, particularly for those that work from home. And now it's like, okay, now I can actually maybe catch my breath a little bit. So I'm kind of excited. I hope you guys are. You, like, you guys look amazing. You know, the thing that um, lately, so I have this, my credit card on my phone, right? So every time that money is spent, I get an alert. So lately, I've been getting a lot of alerts. The way it's been going, the Amazon delivery guy, he knows my wife's name. Oh, did I say my wife? Oh, I shouldn't have said that. But man, a lot of money has been spent these holidays. But anyway, it's all good. God is good. You know, the thing that um, somebody said something, he said, Jesus is the reason for the season. And I thought about that, and I was like, you know what, that is right. Jesus is the reason for the season. If he wasn't born, we would not be celebrating this season. But most importantly, for what he did on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. And so this morning, what I'm talking about is going to dovetail into the title of my sermon. And the title of my sermon is Paid in Full. Somebody say paid in full. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, yeah. he, paid in full. he paid in full. Amen, amen. So let us turn our Bibles to the book of John 1, 29. John 1, 29. And it says, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Now to give you guys a little bit of context, 
So here is John. He sees Jesus walking towards him. And John is telling the people around him that, behold, pay attention, look, focus, remove all distractions. There is the Lamb of God. You see, the reason why John was excited to say that, you see, because Israel had been looking for a person for centuries to cure the problem of sin. So to appreciate Jesus' name, the Lamb of God, I want to give you guys a little bit of a context. You see, in Genesis, when Adam and Eve sinned, they, they tried to fix it right away. They tried to cover it. They took leaves and they sewed it together and they tried to cover themselves, right? They tried to cover themselves physically, their bodies, but they also tried to cover themselves spiritually, their sin. But the covering that they tried to provide did not meet the spiritual requirement for sin. So God had to provide an, a covering for them that only him would accept. Amen? Amen? In the book of Genesis 3.21, the New Living Translation, it says, And the Lord God made clothing from animal skin for Adam and his wife. And the Lord God made clothing from animal skin. And I kept thinking, so how, how did, it doesn't really say how God did it. Did he get, catch an animal? Did he kill it? Did he skin it? Did he dry his hide? Did he sew? To be honest with you, it doesn't really matter. Because God provided a covering that he would accept. But what I'm trying to say here is that the story that I just talked about in Genesis 3.21 is the basis for the sacrificial system in the Old Testament that pacified the wrath of God. Amen? Amen. Now, this centerpiece goes all the way back to the story of the Passover. Now, I know we've all heard about the story of the Passover. So, God had told the children of Israel that, hey, you guys, I'm sending Moses for you guys to leave Egypt, and I'm paraphrasing here. And he said, I am going to do something. I am going to kill the firstborn of, the, of every living thing, including animals. But for it not to touch you, you need to take a lamb, you need to sacrifice it, and you need to put the blood on the doorposts so that when the angel of death comes, it can do what? It can pass over. So my question is, why the blood on the doorpost? Why didn't they just put a stone in front of their doors? Or why didn't they just, um, I don't know, put anointing oil? I, know, I don't know about some people, but some people use anointing oil to fry plantain. They use it to cook. They shower with it. They lotion with it. Why not put anointing oil on the doorpost? I don't know. Why not tie a goat? At the doorpost. Why, why the blood? You see, in the Bible, there's a principle in Leviticus 17, 11. It says that the life of the flesh is in the blood. Other translations would say the life of the body is in the blood. And so if you're in a hospital and they bring in somebody, maybe they have a gunshot wound. And the doctor is telling you that they're losing blood. Basically, what's happening is that they're losing their lives slowly. They're dying. And so they have to kind of give them blood. They have to give them transfusion to keep that life. Amen? To preserve that life. It's the same thing as when you go for your physical. Now, we guys don't like going because we're always worried something is, is wrong. All right? And you want to see how your body has been doing for the past one year or how it's going to be doing for the next one year. So the doctor will do what? A blood test. You see, because that blood test, it speaks a lot about your life. That blood tells a lot about your life. They can diagnose diseases, right? They can tell how your organs are doing, your heart, your kidneys, your liver, how your body is doing. It can tell your cholesterol level, right. how your cholesterol is doing, right. right? It can tell what kind of medicine or medication that you're on. There's so many things that you can tell from the blood. The blood speaks. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? 
So when they put the blood on the post, the angel of the death is hearing the voice of the blood that a sacrifice has been made. You don't need to, perf- I mean, you don't need to kill anybody in here. Skip over, right? That's what the blood is doing. You see, God does not prefer. God does not prefer. God does not prefer wrath, but He can't skip justice. Let me say that again to somebody. God does not prefer wrath, but He cannot skip justice. You see, now there's going to be something that's going to display on the screen here for me, and it's going to show sin, it's going to show judgment, and then it's going to show wrath. So when you sin, God judges, and then there's his wrath, right? Now, God is love. His character is love. He cannot help but be loving. So when you fall, he picks you up lovingly, even though he told you not to do it, and he directs you lovingly to the right path, right? God is faithful. His character is faithful. He cannot help but be faithful. Even when you're not faithful, he's still faithful. Amen? Now, you see, God is just. A lot of people don't want to hear that. His character is just. He cannot help but be just. So when you sin, he has to judge. Amen? Amen. Now, that judgment comes wrath. But you see, God would rather not execute wrath. That's not his go-to thing. So he was looking for a way to bypass wrath. He was looking for a, a, a workaround solution. You see, because the Old Testament way of sacrificing lamb was only a temporary solution. You see, when God sees the blood of an animal, his wrath is temporarily placated. Amen? Now, the Old Testament had two major problems with it. Number one is that it never really provided full payment for the issue of sin. Now, why? Let me show you. In the book of Leviticus 24, 17 to 20, and I'm going somewhere, so bear with me. Leviticus 24, I don't know how you pronounce it. That's how I pronounce it. Sorry, my Nigerian accent. Leviticus, Leviticus. I'm sorry. Yes. Anyone who, (laughs) anyone who takes another person's life must be put to death. Anyone who kills another person's animal must pay for it in full, a live animal for the animal that was killed. Anyone who injures another person must be dealt with according to the injury inflicted. Fracture for a fracture, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Whatever anyone does to injure another person must be paid back in kind. You see, the reason why the Old Testament could not provide full payment was because it was not equal sacrifice. The man would sin, and the lamb was the one sacrificed. It wasn't equal. It wasn't an eye for an eye. It wasn't a foot for a foot. It wasn't a leg for a leg. The man was the one sinning. The poor lamb was the one paying the price. They were not the same. So it never provided full payment. The second problem was that there was no other man that was qualified to be the sacrifice. You see, because every man was just as sinful as the other man. You see, during the sacrifice, the requirement for the sacrifice was the lamb needed to be spotless, without blemish, without deformity, without any issue. There was no man on earth that could fulfill that requirement. Amen? I think of sin in my mind, like, think of it like an ear infection, right? You... You have an ear infection. You can either take um, acetamophen or Advil or Tylenol. That will fix the symptom. It will reduce the fever, but it will come back after a couple of hours, right? Or you can take antibiotics, 
and amoxicillin or something which will deal with the root of the problem itself. You see, the Old Testament way was the Advil. It never really fixed the whole thing. Full payment equal sacrifice was the amoxicillin or the antibiotics. Amen? So you guys are talking. Okay, good. So you see, the system looked forward to the day that God will provide a more prominent solution of sin by having what? An acceptable sacrifice. You see, God must judge sin. That's his character. Now, we're all sinners, so we're all under God's judgment. But we don't all sin the same way. Some sins are small, some sins are medium, some sins are large. But when you come to perfection, a.k.a. God, it doesn't matter what your sin is. Sin is sin. Amen? It doesn't matter whether you're a medium-sized sinner, a small-sized sinner, or a large sinner. Amen? Or a super-sized sinner, like Pastor Eke said. It's sin. Now, I think of the Ten Commandments, right? Like a ten-linked chain. We're all hanging from a cliff with that ten-linked chain. If one of them breaks, it doesn't matter whether you, you broke one or the second one, you fall. That's right. Right? That's, right. That's how it is. It doesn't matter whether you, you, you obeyed the first commandment and you for some reason forgot the ninth commandment. You broke one, you've broken all. Right? That is exactly what it's like. In the book of Hebrews 10, 1 to 2, the New Living Translation, it says that the old system under the law of Moses was only a shadow, a dim preview of the good things to come, not the good things themselves. You see, what he was saying is that that old system was a temporary solution. You ever go to the movies and then you see them, they go through the preview before they actually watch the real movie. The Old Testament was just a preview. It never gave you the whole, you never really got to see the full goodness of God. Hallelujah. You only experienced it in a temporary situation. Amen? Amen? Now, I'm continuing to read here, and it says here, uh, dim preview, okay. The sacrifices under the system were repeated again and again, year after year. But they were never able to provide perfect cleansing for those who came to worship. If they could have provided perfect cleansing, the sacrifices would have stopped. For the worshipers would have been purified once for all time, and their feelings of guilt would have disappeared. You see, my brothers and sisters, God's standards are so high. Only perfection can meet that standard. Amen? Amen? But you don't have to worry about that. Somebody else already did, did that for you. In the book of Hebrews 10, 8 to 10, it says, First, Christ said, You did not want animal sacrifices or sin offering or burnt offerings or other offerings for sins, nor were you pleased with them, though they were required by the law of Moses. What Jesus was saying here was that God never really liked those sacrifices. It was just a temporary thing to assuage God's wrath. Amen? Then he said, look, I have come to do your will. He cancels the first covenant in order to put the second one into effect. See, that is why they call Jesus the mediator of the new covenant. He took the old covenant and got rid of it, and he said, this is the new covenant. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful that I live in the new covenant. Amen? You see, for God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ. Once for all time. You see, Jesus has what you call unlimited atonement. Which means that when the death of Jesus was so sufficient that it cleansed and it removed every sin for all time for every person that ever lived. It wasn't a temporary thing. It was a, your sins in the past, your sins now, your sins in the future. His blood was so sufficient, it didn't just cover one person. It didn't just cover, um, what's it called, the 12 disciples and the Jews on that day. 
It didn't just cover the 12 disciples, the Jews, the Pentecostal Christians for that day. It covered every single person for all time. That is amazing. You see, I have news for us for you guys. People don't miss heaven because of their sin. See, because Jesus already paid for their sins. His last words on the cross were what? It is finished, testelestai, which means paid in full. Amen? You see, when non-believers are judged, their sins are not brought up in Revelation 20. Their sins are not brought up. Not because they haven't sinned, but because Jesus already paid that sin. See, the problem is, even though the sins have been paid for, they don't possess eternal life. You see, the Bible says that for God so loved the Jews that he gave his only begotten son. No, okay. So God so loved only the Pentecostal Christians that he gave his only. No, 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 no. See, God so loved the world, and the world includes murderers. The, you might not want to hear this. The world includes rapists, yes. The world includes sinners, yes. The church is not ready for this, but I'll say it anyways. The church is not ready for this. The world includes homosexuals. You may not be ready to hear this. The world includes, yes. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not what? Perish, but have eternal life. The only difference between sinners and non-sinners, or how should I put it, believers and non-believers, is eternal life. Think about it this way. If, what is the average price for a, 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 um, a starter home, three bedrooms, two baths in, 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 in Dallas? 450? 350, 400, okay. Now imagine that I write you a check fully paid for 350, 400,000 dollars. Now just in case, that's never gonna happen, but it's okay. <laughs> Just let's just imagine it, right? Now, in January, you, you decide that you're going to write a mortgage check to your mortgage servicer for the mortgage, right? Two things have happened there. Either you didn't believe me or you refused that gift, right? Or you did not accept that gift that I gave you. Either one, it doesn't really matter because I've already paid for the house. It's been paid for. It's been paid in full. Amen? You see, believers and non-believers, like I said, have that one thing in common. Eternal life. You see, your punishment for sin has been served by Jesus. The only difference is that one person has accepted a free gift and the other person hasn't. It doesn't nullify the work that has been done on the cross of Calvary. It's there for you. You just need to do what? To receive it and accept it. You see, it is paid for. You have to receive it to enjoy the benefits of it. Amen? You see, people don't go to hell because they've sinned. Like I said, your sin is paid for. They just don't go to heaven because they've not responded in faith to the free gifts that the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings has given to them. That is the difference. That is why it is called the good news. It is called the good news because it is my debt, but Jesus paid for it. It is my sin, but Jesus' death paid for it. It is my mess up, but Jesus paid for it. I don't have to pay for it. Now, this kind of reminds me of when I was in, I grew up in Nigeria. That's why my accent is like this, right? And so, um, across from the streets from where we lived was a pharmacist. Now, we don't call them pharmacists in Nigeria. We call them chemists. Now, two phrases for those of you that are maybe not Nigerian or not... Two problems there. Why are you calling a chemist a pharmacist? They're two different things. Just 
go with it. It's a chemist, <laughs> right? Second thing is that normally in America, a residential property is zoned separately from a commercial property. But alas, <laughs> it's not the same. It's only in Lagos, Nigeria, where you, in one building, you see a church, a hospital, a nightclub, <laughs> and a bakery, all in one. Just go with it, right? <laughs> that is why John said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Because he saw the problem and he saw the solution to it. You see, you have to accept the Savior in order to receive the eternal life that he's offering you. Now, in closing, in France, there was a woman who was held hostage by terrorists. The terrorists were threatening to kill her and every other person that they were holding terrorists, um, the holding um, hostage, thank you. And so the police came and they were negotiating with the terrorists. One officer said, I will substitute my life for hers. She comes, he goes in, and she comes out. What happens? The terrorist kills the policeman. Now, you cannot tell me that that woman will continue to live her life the same way that she did. Because Jesus paid for the, what we call the substitutionary atonement Hallelujah. for our sins. You see, that woman cannot be the same. Because every day she wakes up in the morning, she's thinking and thinking about that person that substituted his life for hers. So every day, we need to, I need to remember that my life is not mine. Somebody traded in his life for my life. Now, last thing I want to talk about before I close this morning is in Revelations 12, 11. Revelations 12, 11. It says, and they overcame him by the blood. In other words, they over when they say him, what they mean is the enemy, the devil, Satan, Lucifer, on and on. They overcame him not by praise and worship, not that there's nothing wrong with that. They didn't overcome him by Bible study, not that there's nothing wrong with that. They didn't overcome him by coming to church. Know that there's nothing wrong with that. They overcame him by the blood of Jesus. You see, what I'm trying to say is that most people, we've all heard the sermons about Fridays when Jesus Christ died. We heard about the Good Friday. We heard about that. We've heard about it in church all the time. We've heard about the sermon on Sundays when Resurrection Sunday happens. We've heard about that Sunday. But a lot of people don't talk about the work that Jesus did on Saturday. You see, because Saturday was crucial, my brothers and sisters. We seem to forget that Jesus went to the kingdom of hell and he snatched away the keys and authority from the devil. Now, to give you a little context, in the spiritual court system, Jesus is the defense attorney. God is the judge. The enemy or devil is the prosecutor. He is also the accuser. Back in the days, he was also the warden of prisons. What does that mean? That meant that he had the keys to jail you. But guess what Jesus did? <laughs> you see, Jesus went to the kingdom of darkness. He snatched away the keys. So now the devil cannot take you to jail. He cannot, he has no authority over you. He has no authority over you. All he can do is to deceive you. All he can do is to trick you. All he can do is to manipulate you so that you can forget about the blood. You can forget about the work that was done on the cross of Calvary, but he cannot jail you. He doesn't have the authority to. Jesus already took that authority. Amen? Now, as we close this morning, I just want us to remember the work that was done on the cross of Calvary. Yeah. 
See, what trips me out the most is Jesus didn't know me when he gave his life for me. I wasn't even a concept when he died for me. And not only did he die for me, he paid for Damilola's sins in the past. And even the sin that I'm going to commit, not that there's licensure to do so, he's already paid for it. Now, that blows my mind. Now, that is what you call unconditional love. That he loved me regardless of my sin. Amen? Amen. Let us close our eyes and close. Heavenly Father, Lord, we bless you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the word of God. We thank you for guiding us and teaching us. We thank you, Lord, for your ultimate sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. Without you, we won't be here, oh Lord. You made the ultimate sacrifice for me, oh Lord. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Father, Lord. Now, I just want to have our, our eyes still closed. For those of you who don't know Jesus, who don't know this God, you have an opportunity this morning to get to know him. You have an opportunity this morning to enter into his presence. You have an opportunity this morning to receive this gift that he's given to you. Don't write a check for your mortgage. It's already been paid off. So just say this prayer with me. Lord, I open my heart to you. I pray, Father, Lord, that you just receive me, O oh Lord. I pray, O oh Lord, that you guide me. I pray, O oh Lord, that you forgive me for all my sins that I have sinned against you. I believe in you, Jesus Christ, because you are the Son of God, and your blood has cleansed me. I commit my life to you from this day forth, and I pray that you accept my prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if anyone said this prayer this morning alongside me, I want you to text the word renew to 94000. Or you can scan that QR code right now from your phone. You see, because now that you've given your life to Christ, I think of it like you've been drafted into the army. Now, the army is not going to take you directly into the war. They're going to take you to the boot camp. Right? And they're going to train you and work with you and help you to understand the do's and the no don'ts, the rules and the regulations, so that you're walking in lockstep with the Holy Spirit. Now is the time for you to do so. So when you click, when you go to that QR code or you type 9400, we have some information to share with you. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. 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 So now it's time for us to take our communion. You all should have a pack, a small pack that maybe the ushers give to you. Thank you, sir. And in that pack is the bread and that represents the flesh of Jesus and the juice that represents the blood of Jesus. In the book of 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26, it says, For I pass unto you what I received from the Lord himself on the night when he was betrayed. The Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body, which I have given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now you may eat the bread. Now, in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with blood. Do this in remembrance of me. 
as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. This is the blood. Now you may drink. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now it's time to take our offering. And now I invite, before I actually take the offering, let's, uh, let me say a quick word of prayer on our com the communion. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We have the opportunity to receive this gift from you, O oh Lord. And also to celebrate and remember you, O oh Lord, particularly during this holiday season. We are grateful, Father. We are thankful, O oh Lord. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we remember, as we remember the sacrifice that was made on the cross of Calvary, that our hearts will continue to draw nearer and closer to you. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, the choir is going to go ahead and lead us in, in, um, in praise and worship. But also, if you're giving cash, the ushers are going to have a bucket at the end over there. You can give cash. If you want to give your offering, there should be a QR code there as well. You can scan that and you can pay online. There are ushers walking around the aisles with an envelope as well. And you can give your offering in that envelope. Amen? Now the choir will lead us. Come on, clap your hands for you, people. Yeah. We set our hope for you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on no one who is the everlasting God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. You may please be seated. Hallelujah. So th th there are three things I need to do uh, this afternoon before we leave. Hopefully we can do them um, in quickly so we can leave on time. You know, this is a, a family church, yeah? And that is why every time there's a baby, we announce the baby. You know, every time there's a marriage, we announce the marriage. Amen. Uh, today, we want to, um, um, it marks the 10th anniversary of the passing of Reverend Amos Owolabi Adejumobi. Uh, that's uh, Okwe Adejumobi's father. And we would like to take this time to thank God for his life and to pray for his family. Um, so if Okwe and his immediate family members will please rise. Where are they? Are they here? They're here. Where are they? Okay, they're all in the corner there. Can I get some lights, please? Excellent. Okay, so that's Okwe and his family. We're praying for them. Let's just bow our heads and say a quick word of prayer for them. Let us pray that the Lord will continue to support them, that the Lord will continue to encourage them, that the Lord will continue to be there for them. Let us pray that the presence of the Lord will never depart from their home, that even though their father has gone to be with the Lord, the Lord will make himself strong on their behalf in a way that an earthly father could never be. Father, we thank you and we bless you. Father, we give you praise. Father, we thank you for your children who are celebrating the life of their beloved. Father, we just pray that you will continue, Father, to 
be God for them. You continue to be a blessing to them. Father, we pray that your presence, your grace, and your mercy will never depart from their home in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We bless you and we give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. You may please be seated. Amen. The, the second thing I want to do is um, there should be a QR code. Can you put the QR code? Now, I need all of us very quickly, very quickly, just indulge me. Scan the QR code that is going to be on the screen. Where is it? Is, where is the QR code? Okay, the QR code is here. Can, can you guys go sit down? Sit down. I want you to scan the code. No, no, no. Where, is, where are your phones? In the back. Okay, grab your phones and come sit down. Yeah? So bring out your phones. Your phones are usually out anyway. <laughs> now everybody's acting like they're not. Huh? Can you scan the QR code? Okay, so, so what I want you to do, right, is that the QR code should lead you to uh, a form with three questions, right? Three questions. Now, the idea is this. We don't want to be a church where we just preach sermons that we think, right, will bless you. We want to know where you are at, right? We want to know what are the things you need to hear, what are the things you want to hear. So if you will quickly just answer those three questions, right, it will help us in planning for 2022. Amen? It's 2022, right? Yeah, okay, 2022. It will help us plan for 2022. I want to know what you are going through. You know, what are the topics that you think will, will bless you? What are the things you want to hear about? So I, I don't care what it is. If you want to hear sermons about money, if you want to hear sermons about love, if you want to hear sermons about sermons, whatever, just please answer the question and we'll collate it and you will see. Sorry? It's not scanning. What, what phone are you using? Okay, okay, okay. Can we stretch out our hands and pray for our sister? That the Lord will promote her. You have to zoom in. Anyone else with Android having trouble? He's having trouble. Just, oh, I don't, I, I don't know how Androids work. I'm sorry. Uh -uh. Yeah, you got it. Okay, so apparently, there's some people with Androids who have figured it out. Please, you can borrow your neighbor's iPhone really quick. Uh? Are we all done? Please, it's really important. I want to know what you want us to talk about. I want to know what you want us to talk about. And what will happen is that over the year, over the course of the year, you will see those topics being addressed one way or the, or the other. Yeah? We want to be a blessing. Yeah? The Bible says that the Lord is a present help. He's a very present help. He's there when you need him. And he's there where you need him. Amen? The third thing I want to do is this. So, it's Christmas, right, in a couple of weeks, two weeks or less, it's going to be Christmas. But we realize that there are some folks who are having a bit of a hard time, you know, uh, financially. Um, so, what we decided to do as a church, you know, every once in a while we do this, anybody who is having a hard time, right, please, after the service, see Tiwa. Tiwa, can everybody turn, turn around? Turn around, yeah. Tiwa is wearing a red blouse, black pants, and I think she has braids, yeah? Excellent, yeah, and she's tall. If you see somebody who's not tall, it's not Tiwa. So, so that's, that's Tiwa, oh, no, no, we're not, Gloria is wearing blue, unless the person is colorblind, but Tiwa is gonna be right there. If you need assistance, right, we will help as much as we can, amen? So immediately after the service, please go to Tiwa. She will take your name, wait for a few minutes, and the church will write you a check. Now, it's not going to be a lot of money because there are a lot of people, but at a minimum, right, it will make a little difference. It will help a little bit, yeah? I think that's a good thing. 
I think that's a good thing. Yeah? You know, we, we don't want to, you know, spend money bringing turkey or stuff when that's not what you need. You know, some people, you give them turkey, they're like, what am I going to do with this? You know, it's, it's a lot of trouble to cook the turkey, so just give me a check instead. So that's what we're doing, right? So after the service, please see Tiwa, and she will be very happy to give you some money. Let us rise to our feet. Please, if you did not scan the QR code, please scan it before you leave and answer those questions. I would really, really appreciate it. Yeah? And if you have an Android phone, I will say a quick prayer for you. Who has an Android on that front row? Who? Please, see me after the service. <laughs> huh? That's why I want to see him. Okay, let us pray. Father, we thank you for our brothers and sisters who have Android phones. <laughs> we know that you love them just the same. You're not a partial God, even though some people test you. Just fooling around. The Lord has a sense of humor. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you and have a fantastic week.